has achieved with all the mana <laughs> when it comes to scoring tries. You want an example, Jordan, of how good this man yes, is right please, here? Brookie. He scored a try on every debut match he's ever had, whether that's Grammar, Harbour, Chiefs, Marty's, and now the All Blacks. He is a bucket. Talk about it on debut. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest yes. today, Sean Stevenson. Welcome, welcome to the show, man. <laughs> welcome to the show. Got you, man. Appreciate Thank you for your time, my brother. Big little intro for you. Got yeah, you. that's good. That was really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I'm, like I'm that, trying, man. I'm trying to give you better. Give better. Every professional team, it was a debut try on debut. Eh? Did you know that? Yeah, I, I kind of knew it, but I didn't know every every team. So I think it was like it's like eight and. Eight and counting at the moment. That's great. Oh, every team's going to try and sign you up now. We've got to leave to go now. You know, get that contract and then. I did my job. I did my job. Hey, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for um for joining us. We always start the show or the the interviews that we have with something called Meet Me at the Five, which obviously you're very very accustomed to. But it's just a, a quick, you know, five questions just to ease into to the whole thing. Uh, first one we have is if you were a movie character, who would you be? And I'd love to be the rock, eh? <laughs> Bro, same. <laughs> What's your, so, yeah, it's just yeah. living the life, I reckon. It's true, though, eh? Like, he's got such a good brand, too, eh? Just kind of, like, shifts tin, helps people. And to be that big as well, I like, reckon. Like, some eh? money. What's your favourite rock I've seen Brock in, the, in uh, Les Mills lately, so he's been pushing some yeah, how, what does What does Brock look like in the gym? When Bro, you see him with a hoodie on. Can I tell a story? But when you go with the All Like, I went to the same time as the All Blacks are in there, and you don't get a chance. Like every weight at the gym is being used, so you kind of just stand there and look. At one point, it changes everyone as well. So I always go to the gym at the same time, and I've never seen a lady do handstands. Or this lady was doing handstands all of a sudden while the All Blacks were there. It just changes everybody. Split squat. <laughs> Bro, yeah. facts it changes it all. Uh, okay, this is going to. Hang on, hang on. So, what was your what's your favorite rock movie? Because I've got a couple that I don't think get. Um, well, I mean the ones he does with Kevin Hart are pretty good. You know, yeah, what I mean? do you they, remember they Welcome to the Jungle? Yeah, Welcome to the Jungle. How good is that one, eh? Welcome to the jungle. I think so. It had two Jumanji? names. It had, it had two names. Nah, it's not Jumanji. It was like, what a great potty. This is awesome. Let's go next question. Sorry about it. The Rock is a great character. Like okay, it. obviously you live in Hamilton. Uh, you also are from Auckland. If you had to pick one, Auckland <laughs> or Hamilton, come on now. Oh, that's why I live six months of the year in each because I get the best of both. Oh, of those. Well done, man. Well done. <laughs> you smart. smart. Well done. Uh, what's the last ballad you sung? Or like go to in the shower. Favorite slow jam. Probably Usher. Any kind of Usher, I reckon. Because eh? I think my my has been playing quite a lot of Usher at the moment. Yeah. But oh, you still listen to him? <laughs> nah, that's all right. That's <laughs> no, all right. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Or no, the new releases on Spotify, you know, you kind of get the Burner Boy vibes, you know, yeah, yeah. Big Seven Effort or Vicks. something like that. Yeah, I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, Big Matt Ting. Yeah, yeah, Big Matt Ting. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about this one? Start cut bench. I want to see where you go on this one. We'll start with all black fullbacks. Christian Cullen, Ben Smith, Mills Moliaina. Start one, cut one, bench one. Sad to Mills. I'm starting Christian Cullen any day. Oh. Just because I feel like when you're growing up at that age, you know, when you're like getting a hot hot Milo, you're settling in for the game. It's up, like the game's up in Europe or something like that at 7am and you're watching Christian, uh, Christian Cullen scoring 100 metre tries, you're like, yeah, he's the man. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You got to cut one and bench one too. Um, obviously bench mills because <laughs> <laughs> he's my mortgage Cause broker. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually. Well, his company yeah, yeah, um, helps yeah. us out. Yeah. So I'll have to bench him because otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Might not get the best ratio back up. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's smart. That's smart. And then, sorry to bend over. Yeah, obviously. Still one of the greats though. You're yeah, in the conversation. Unreal. It's business. It's yeah. business. Okay. What about first fives from the Chiefs? Mackenzie, Beaver, <laughs> Cruden. Oh my God. <laughs> we got him early. Either way, I'm going to get slapped. Yeah, well, come on, you got to do it. Oh, probably. Uh, Who's starting? Probably start Watermu, which is Crud's middle name. <laughs> and, and then the other two can just fight off the. <laughs> nah, come on. Um, come on, bro. Probably bench um, Beaver and then. Oh, <laughs> D Max will oh. catch you later. <laughs> Oh, it's rough, no, eh? He knows the love. He knows the love. Like uh, and to finish up, meet me at the five greatest achievement of all time. Oh, I'd have to be two weeks ago when I got my debut. Don the jersey. Yeah, it's just good to get the monkey off the back, eh? It's been, um, I guess, a long eight or nine years of grinding. So a few iffy moments there, a lot of ups and downs. And um, yeah, I guess I had about 35 entourage come down of my family. So it was pretty yeah. cool to see them come from Gold Coast, Brizzy, and 
Dunedin's not the easiest place to get no, into. Not, There's no relax. international flights, so you're yeah. literally flying into either Auckland or Christchurch, and then you're catching another flight. Oh, that was an expensive weekend for you, huh? Yo, <laughs> <laughs> well, so you got it, you got them. it all. <laughs> <laughs> Those tickets. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, I got you. So, yeah, it was. Yeah, price was. Oh, you can't put a price on having all your family there. You know what I mean? So, um, that was just awesome to have them there and. Um, I guess the moment we shared, I shared with my parents after the game. Um, I wasn't too emotional, like actually before the game. Mm. Um, I was actually quite crook because I um, slept with the aircon on Tuesday oh. night. <sighs> Get you, and you wake you up out. with that little like yeah. like, like croaky <laughs> voice, yeah. and then like you can feel the tickle in the back of your throat. And I was like, oh no, nah, this would happen. Obviously, just got named on the Tuesday, and um, so I was just trying to battle that. So I actually, like, probably took my mind off actually like everything else. But I was probably more nervous about the hucker. <laughs> totally Genuine like Because you don't actually Like we practice it heaps Before the actual tournament starts But then if you're not under 23 You don't actually practice it Because I do like a little run through Captain's run And then um, That was it So Here I am Friday night A little bit of YouTube <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure know. Like I was like Far out If there's anything Like there's that many angles On the hucker You can On the hucker You can see <laughs> So, did you practice whoops. in front of the mirror? <laughs> nah, I didn't. You didn't practice, practice so it's not cucker. You need the hucker. Because <laughs> you'd be cucker at it, yeah. yeah. I love that. I, I want to I start there, um, Sean, because, you know, bringing your tribe down. Because, you know, if, if you are a whānau, a part of, um, you know, having a sporting, you know, um, talent, uh, it does take a tribe, right? And before we get into All Blacks and all of that, and I love seeing I love seeing your eyes light up around, you know, the All Black dream because it, it shows it's still there, you know, but... Where, where did you start? Like, where did, where was Sean before? You know, we kind of we got kind of got to where we got to today. Because I know you were at Grandma, but I know I've heard stories of Westlake wanted you, and so maybe the first question I want to start is for you: What are your first memories of going rugby? Is kind of what I want to do, and and who influenced that? Yeah, so I was born and bred up in um, Whangaparoa, up in Highbush West Coast. So, um, born at North Shore Hospital, and but my parents had been up. Did there. you like skate growing up? No. <laughs> I tried to skate, but I was so unco, man. Why do I just like, make like right long boards and rollerblades right up there? Yo, straight to the Ariwa, um, <laughs> skate. Like 100% the, yo, skate park. Yo, and so um, I grew up there and then um, I started at Silverdale um, Rugby Club. So that's where I guess all the dreams started happening, you know. Um, and then obviously playing like touch and then um, kind of just got into it. And um, I guess it wasn't until like you're 10 or 11, like you start getting a little bit more serious when you're like tackle and then you're like, oh yeah, what teams are you going to go to? Oh, what teams are you going to make? And then it's like, oh, intermediate. So like you get into like, you finish year six and it's like, okay, sweet. Totally. It starts getting a little bit more serious. And I'm like, my parents were like, nah, you're not going to school on the coast. And I was like, okay. Okay. Like, <laughs> well, my friends in there, so, but okay. Where am I going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I ended up heading down to North Cross Intermediate, um, which is just a year seven, year eight intermediate um, in Browns Bay which was probably one of the best decisions I, um, I have because I didn't know anyone down there. So I was busing um, from the coast down to North Cross and um, I was pretty fortunate because I think it was at the time it was one of the biggest intermediates in New Zealand. There was like 12, 1,300 okay. students and it was just year seven, year eight. So And you just get instantly um, introduced to different cultures. Different, different cultures and there's like all different classes and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like in year eight there's a sports class so it's like predominantly just sports but obviously you're still doing school work but it's just stuff you haven't seen before yeah 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 and so scott washer i don't know if you guys heard of scott washer but he's he's coached a lot of um i guess boys and girls coming out of um north cross they've gone on to higher honors so um a little quick shout out to him but um yeah i guess that's kind of when you figure out like what you what you're going to do and um at that point i was still going back to silverdale and playing or well, it's like j1s which is like under 13s or under 12s or whatever um and then get to year eight and you're like, sweet. It's actually like, yeah, let's do this. This is, well, what's your life going to be now? Because yeah. you know, you're, going to, you're going to secondary school, which is obviously, um, mm. you know, big steps in life. I don't think um, we, we <coughs> really like, um, we, we don't talk about this with athletes enough, but you say year eight where there was a looming question around like, this could be something you do. That's actually a very young age to be mm. thinking about those things. Do you remember being year eight and kind of going, Rugby could be what I want to do. Like, I do want to be an All Black. Do you remember being that young? Um, yeah, I guess you kind of see other boys that are older than you. Like, for example, like, SJ was at my school at Whangapurua Primary. Yes. So, obviously, he, like, passed like, path the way for, yeah, for everyone um, from the coast. But, um, yeah, I guess you kind of, like, you go to school and then you kind of just follow your mates to, like, wherever the next Whatever secondary is, schools yeah. are and then whatnot. And I guess that's when it comes back to Westlake. I applied for Westlake. Um, Talk about it. 
<laughs> and I didn't get in. So um, why don't the they? Why don't they let you in? Now the year before they um, they were just picking, hand picking like all the best sports people, all the like most like best academic. So um, you weren't seen as as, as, as one, one of them for Wesley. Yeah, I thought I would have been sweet for <laughs> academic, but <what's> there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So um, so then the, when the, the year I applied, um, they got like the cops in to like supervise like the ballot. Um, oh, like I'm serious. Serious, yo. So obviously when I applied for it, because that's just what even you know you just follow your mates, and obviously Westlake is like probably one of the best sure. boys school, school and on the shore. Sure, you know, yeah. like that's what you kind of do. And obviously I'm out of zone because I was still on the coast, so. Um, I was like 130th on the ballot, and I was like, sh- "Damn!" Like, Street Dean. Yeah, I was like, "Well, where do I go now?" Because I'm my family's Catholic. I'm Catholic, and so obviously Rosemary or St Peter's was kind of the next one. And then we actually had a family friend. He um, he ferried from Gulf Harbour into town, and then would bus up from town to um, Grandma. Yeah. So he was doing out his own from Grandma, and they're like, "Oh, like, why don't you just give it a crack?" And so I was like, "Ah, oh, sweet as will apply." Um, so he applied. Didn't get in um, out of zone, um, but was lucky enough to get a um, interview for the boarding house there at um, Tibbs House. So um, was lucky. Well, yeah, lucky enough to get yeah to get in that way. And then in year ten, Westlake came crawling back, asking if I was going to come back. And (laughs) I was like, No, sir. (laughs) But run us through your time at at Grammar as well, because it must be like you're living in the moment when you're that young, but you're probably also working out. Okay, I'm, grammar's a big rugby school. I'm holding my own here. This actually could be a really big pathway, but also I'm just trying to live life with the boys and have fun. Like run us through the balancing act of being away from home, working out what you're going to do next, and then just having fun with the boys. It's actually quite tough, bro, because like you're in a boarding house with year nines and mm. everyone's come from different like regions. So like there might be a few boys that know each other like from Puki or um, Whangarei or something like that. So like there's actually quite a, I guess, like heaps of new boys in Tibbs house, so it's getting to know everyone, and then, then you go to like, school. the first day of school, yeah. and there's like seven hundred year nine students or whatever, because like grandma huge was school. like huge, huge. So it's like far out, like, and they have different upbringings, they yeah, they, different yeah, class. yeah. So like, there's just so many like different cultures and stuff like that. Um, I guess when you, I think, I, I don't know if you think that you're going to be good at rugby, but when you want to like succeed in it, you can, you know, you kind of feel like sweet. Oh, I'm going to make a good go of it. And um, at this point, I was like 55 kgs, man. I was <laughs> dripping wet, man. Yeah. Like, I'll send you. I don't know if I want to send you a go. Send us that photo. It was like, um, it was crazy, man. Like, yeah, I didn't have anything to me. And I guess um, at Grammar, like, compared to every other school, like, they probably gym like two or three times a week. Um, like, St. Kent's are like, or like, hand boys, like, Hardy yeah, yeah, ass, yeah, like totally. ten sessions a week, like morning, afternoon, morning, afternoon, and at grammar was literally just Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, up to you if you want to do like one gym session in the morning. But I didn't know what gym was. <laughs> yeah. Just really quickly, because I think it's important to point out, Sean, um, for people outside of the Auckland region, probably yeah. Wellington as well, and mm. maybe Christchurch are the three kind of main places where you go to these, <clears throat> you know, rugby prestigious schools. Um, for you not to stay local and play locally, it's really it's the risk you run, right? If you want rugby to be a career, you kind of need to be going to one of these bigger schools who treat it or else – because I'm sure we've all had friends who slipped through the gaps who were really talented players but they didn't go to the right school. Was that a, a major driver for you choosing to get – you know, come from the coast and come all the way into town? Was that one of the major major parts? Yeah, I guess so. I, I think, like, to be honest, it's your parents say, like um – I guess it depends on how much they um, yeah. want you to succeed and well, what the pinch potential that they, they can see in you, you know. I mean, um, I probably can put my hand on the heart and probably wasn't the best um, academic um, person, probably didn't study and work as hard. And um, it was quite funny. I had a promo yesterday and I was look, I was doing some training with Fraser Tech High, which is a Hamilton school and um, they're under 14s. But, um, you know, you kind of tell them, like, you, like, listen to your coaches, like, listen to your – um, your parents or your teachers and whatnot, because um, I feel like once you finish school, you kind of like reflect and look back and like, damn, like I wish I did a bit more there. Or um, because obviously after school, you, you know, your professional career might actually not happen, so you need to fall back on something. So, so your parents were a major part of, of ch- helping you choose what school, high school you were going to, because they could see some, some potential in you and they could see it being something better. So does that make it when you get that all black jumper and really emotional? Because it's like them that's driven you or helped drive you into this dream 
in a position and then this is your chance to pay them back? Yeah, 100%. Like, um, well, when I went to Graham, obviously it's for maybe like it was 12, and a, 12 and a half grand to go to boarding school. Yeah. And I didn't get a scholarship or anything. Wow. So my, um, my parents like sold the boat. Um, and I think, you know, they took a loan out for me to go to boarding school. So mm. they had like, obviously invested a lot of me and um, like you said, to come um, – and get this far and then to actually get my debut a couple of weeks ago. Um, like I wasn't emotional leading up to the game or um, even during the game, but once that final whistle went, like I looked around, saw them, had a little bit of a yeah. tear, and then um, once all the family came onto the ground, my mum and dad were there like, oh, man, I just like the water. <laughs> can you run yeah, through that feeling loose. that you felt at that time? Because yeah, we're so over. many of us would we love be to know that feeling. Uh, I'd we love can be to make my family ball. proud. Like, totally. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can overanalyze this. Nah. But can you yeah. talk us yeah. through yeah. what is like you, a tear comes down? But what is the thing that's driving those tears? Like, what's the can, what can you connect to? What memories and what type of things are you thinking when you're crying? I just think because they've been there every step of the way from when I talked about being at Silverdale as a five year old junior kid. You know, you're. What, playing 22 to the trial line, you know, and then you get a couple of years older, then you're halfway to the trial line, and then you get to like 10 or mm. 10 to 11, and you're playing full field. They've and, been there. You know, you're playing like you're getting your oranges at half time, and, um, you know, your old man's helping out coaching after um, after school on a Tuesday, Thursday. And then I just think like um, how much they've had to sacrifice in their life to, you know, all the hours that they've put in. Um, and like they obviously they say, nah, that was all you, that was all you. But, you know, I think how they've raised me or how they've got to me or like got to that point of when I finished school and was comfortable to go down to Hamilton. Um, you know, there was a lot of tough times down there as well because um, when you leave school, you don't actually have that much money. Like you're literally, mm, you're, about, trying, you're trying to crack it. it. You're trying to crack mm. professional rugby. Um, and like, for example, you might be on a PUD, which is only like seven and a half K. And, um, a month? A year. Oh, oh, wow. oh. A year. So, um, and then I was I got called in to train with the Chiefs for the full year, so um, I couldn't actually work full time. So I was literally playing Monday. Oh, I was training Monday to Friday as an eighteen year old at Chiefs, and then go play club footy on a Saturday. And I would have only been on like twelve and a half ca- uh, grand for my first year. So I think at the time it was like eight hundred bucks a month. And that's and stressful you that because you, you can't like go out and get a strenuous job because that's going to affect training. That's yeah, yeah. So because well, you're you're yeah. literally like in the environment, so you're like, oh well, I'm not gonna say I need to go like go get a job because I'm. Living, mm. I'm living like the my dream. dream at the moment is like I'm doing professional. Very and like I said, I was actually like trip like 70 kgs dripping wet, so I needed to be in the gym, man. I was like bench pressing like just the bar. Yeah. Like I wasn't even that strong at all. So like I needed like if I was like sweet, if I'm gonna put on weight and get what to kind it. of things do you like eat? Like you know, when you're like scraping by, like were you trying to ask the boy, did the the other players, senior players, like buy you a feed, like. If you think about it, twelve and a half k a year is 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 absolutely nothing. You yeah. can't go and work and go get a job to top top up the funds because you're trying to be a professional athlete. Yeah. Like, so I was actually lucky. So twelve and a half till the Mighty Ten Cup season start, and because um, if you're on a PUD, but then you make the NPC side, then you get bumped up to I think it was like eighteen. Mm. Um, so. Oh, it was. It was the tough, harder man. thing though sometimes is that people the perception is that you're cracking it, right? Yeah. And you're dealing with that too mm. from people like, oh, you're a rugby player, you're cracking yeah. it, you made the Chiefs team. but Yeah, so I think like because heaps of us boys have gone through that, th- that process, now when we sit down with like player associations and like what we want for the younger boys coming through is we want like guidance and um, mm. we want more money for them to actually like, you know, if they're going to be working full time or, um, you know, three or four days a week, like we actually need to get around them and them make sure that they're actually going all good and that they're getting paid the right money, like, that they need for the for that year, you know what I mean? Because you're basically rugby apprentices, right? Yeah. 100%. So you, you'd be wanting the equivalent of say what an apprentice would get if they were learning their, their as a plumber, an yeah. apprentice plumber. You kind of want to be learning it, but having enough money to be able to hone in that craft. Yeah. And a little different for you boys too. Like you're saying, you're trying to gain weight. Yeah. The only way to gain weight on that amount of money is oh, it's man. not good food. I was like fifteen hundred calorie protein shakes, like two or three times a day Ugh. on top of food as a chore eh? yeah and it's like i'm not even like i'm just stuffing this down but i think like i think harry grant came out not too long ago about um how Have about storm? Have yeah, yeah like about all the um league players you know if you're starting to crack it off like they don't get paid enough and whatnot and um yeah i think it's just getting the guidance around that because like if i'm coming back to when um 
I celebrated with my parents on the field. It was like those tough times, man. Like there were some dark times down those first couple of years. And obviously I was grateful that I was in the environment, but, um, you know, getting, I like guess living off like a couple of hundred bucks a week and whatnot. And, um, you know, people were doing it now and whatnot. It was, um, I guess it's just like one of those moments that, you know, staying in it and, mm. um, I guess grinding it out for the last eight or nine years, um, made it all worth it. So, um, yeah, I think there was that, there was so many tears and stuff like that. And, and I think, like, even though it's a dream for me, like, it's been a dream yes. for, like, my family, family and my so. parents, you know? Like, they've, like, your cousins, your auntie and uncles, they come yes. to your games. Like, everyone's been there from, totally. you know, day dot. And so, um, obviously, to get, like, to celebrate with them, I think it was, like, yeah, sweet. Like, because um, um, when the original team got named, um, like, a couple of the family came around and stuff like that. I was like, oh, well, you know, mum was excited. Like, oh, yeah, well have a few drinks and stuff like that and have a barbecue and um obviously didn't get named but then got named at the end as injury replacement so there was, I guess there was a lot of hurt at that point mm. um and so I guess I just wanted to go into the camp and just try to put my best foot forward and um I thought I did that and um you know I was obviously lucky to get a crack in the last game and I think there was so emotion so much mo um, emotion from that because um you know they were there experiencing that like Totally. The um, I guess the sadness of not making the team and um, then to, for all of them to come down um, for the game, I just made it extra special. Can I – Can I? Um, sorry, Sean, to do this to you, but I, you're very in touch with your feelings, which is a really good thing for all of us as males to hear you saying that. Um, you talk about that hurt of, 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 you know, when you're – I'm 41 years old and I'll be the first to admit I have not seen someone string together an NPC uh, campaign like you have – Super Rugby, a campaign like you did, and then to not make that All Black, like even starters, I would have, I put my name on, to your name going, this dude is a certified starter. It's a tough position for, uh, for, for me to feel like, oh, hang on a minute, I was wrong. It can only be <laughs> 10 times worse for you, 100 times worse for you, because you, you lived that and you went through those campaigns and I'll say it bluntly, you deserve to be there and I have not seen a campaign like that before. I ask you to take us through those times where you are alone, by yourself. You know what you've strung together. You know how good you've been. What's going through your head? What are you, what's bat, what are you battling in your head when you know what you've done and that the result hasn't been what you've wanted? Yeah, I think you still, I think, yeah, you definitely ask yourself questions like, oh, like, what could I have done different? And um, I think because you've gone through, uh, through so much hurt, like, from the start of the career, and when I say mm. hurt, it's not like always, you know, but like obviously you remember the dark times that you've had to get to um, where you are now, and um, I guess even you know throughout your whole career, you get hit with um, small punch like punches in terms of you don't make teams or you're getting yeah. injured or um, oh sorry you're not in the twenty three this week, you know you're playing club rugby and yeah, I was like I was playing North Coast rugby prems um, July last year, um, mm. and so like. I guess it's kind of like a, I don't know, you come from playing um, prems to then coming into Super Rugby and starting every game. It was quite a surreal moment to then making All Blacks and playing your debut like literally a year later. Um, yeah, it was, I guess the the tough times make you a, a lot stronger and um, like I'm not going to lie, like I'm pretty proud of myself in terms of how I've bounced yeah. back over the last few years and um I wasn't always pretty and there was times where I was I'll literally like call my mum up and be like, oh, I want to get out of here, like I'm not enjoying it, um, you know, to mates and stuff like that, like I need to get out of here and um, yeah, obviously there was tough times last year when I thought, you know, I didn't make the All Black 15 after um, playing for Harbour and stuff like that, there was um, some tough times there because I was like, damn, like that's the second team in New Zealand. I can't even like crack that. So like, well, you know, where does it? Yeah, well, where do I where do I stand now? And um, that's when all those rumors started playing, coming up about league and stuff like that. And I still had one more year on my contract, and I was like, oh, you know what? Well, I'm just going to go on this year and um, give it a good nudge. And um, I'm obviously strung a whole um, season where I've started or played every game this season, um, and which I did. And then I guess yeah to get the honours, I, I guess I felt like I deserved. Um, four weeks later for my debut, I, I guess it just all made it, um, yeah, pretty special. Yeah, I think I think another thing that people can't appreciate um, being in public spotlight is the noise you have to deal with. 
and I know, and I've 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 watched you in a, a in a couple of public pu- public settings over the last couple of months, and you really you really deal with the idea of people coming up to you, and because the assumption is is that you it, it it's I assume it would be triggering sometimes because you always got to kind of tell someone, no, oh, good man, you know, like it's it's how it is, you know. Oh, mate, you should have made it. You should have made it. Well, you know, how how do you feel dealing with with that noise sometimes, like? You know, because you do, ha- you are a public figure. You do have to kind of interact with the public so much. But it actually, I, I liken it to like we don't, have, we get to come to work, and whenever we have to deal with disappointment, it doesn't have to be on a, in a public setting, <laughs> and not everyone gets to comment on it. But it is, it is something that un- unfortunately rugby players and sporting people do have to deal with. There is that access there, and it's I'm sure no yeah. one's trying to be an egg. But no, nah, it's all part of it, though. You know, like I guess um, if anyone can do it and just play professional sport and then walk off the field and go back, like, go yeah, home true. and, you know, like, you know, everyone would yeah. wish it, wish that, but, um, man, like, if someone's coming up to me and like, oh, man, you you deserve to have been there, they're, like, they're probably a supporter of you, you know, like, you, people telling me, corner. bro, we look the same, they're like, man, you yeah, deserve to be in the I soak it up, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, brother, you yeah, know, yeah, I appreciate it, I'll be back next year, it was tough, it was tough, but I'm, I'm working on it, man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, nah, like, uh, I mean, you just, you just get used to it, like, it's, it's just part of your job and, um, Oh, you know, I guess when you hear it heaps, it's just like, oh, you know, like, but I feel like in your own head, you know that, you know, you probably deserve to be there. So if you think you deserve to be there, then you deserve to be there um, based off your performances and whatnot, you know, because that's where you get um, criticised the most is how you play and what people see out there. And I guess what people don't see is all the background work that goes on, you know, like, um, yeah, being in some boys' positions where um, you might not be playing Week in week out, I've been I've been yeah. in that position as well, and so you, you, you know as a team you just got to stay together, and um, I guess the connections you have off the field is what makes the team tighter, and um, yeah, you don't want to be that guy that you know I guess you've been there in that yeah. position where you haven't been in the twenty three. You're sulking, yeah, you're yeah. sulking and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So um, can I ask one more journalistic question? Keep this going, man. This, right, this is a very this is a rugby journalist in me wants to find this out. When you have had, and I'm going to go back to the season, the seasons you've had, and the and the and so many people supporting you and wanting to see you in that black jumper, um, and as a full time starter, what do the All Blacks say to you? And you don't have to answer this. You don't have to say this. But what are the feedback? What is New Zealand rugby good at giving a feedback to a player who's clearly special, who's played out of this world for the last seasons? What are they saying to you to keep you hungry, to keep you driven, to keep you going? I want another go in that black jumper. Um, oh, I guess. You always have work ons in your game. You know your your game's never perfect. Um, I would argue you over the last couple of seasons you haven't had any. But go on, <laughs> take us behind the veil. What, yeah. what what is the work on? What is um, the work on for you? I guess like there's a few things. So it's quite technical in in a way that we, we um, love it. We love it, mate. You um, I guess it's, when there's rucks happening and stuff like that, they like they're just telling me to get in better uh, better body positioning because sometimes I might not look like I'm um, strong enough in a position and whatnot. And then um, I guess it's like work on the ground, so um, if I'm getting tackled, um, how am I getting the ball back as fast as possible in terms of like snapping it back or um, mm. not, I guess, getting stuck in a position where teams can actually get on the ball and whatnot. Um, Do you agree with it? Yeah, like, obviously there's parts of my game like that that, that, that does need to be work on. Um, I guess it's just tough because obviously, um, I guess it's like micro skills that are, yeah. you know, um, and yeah, for whatever reason, um, it's just the way that, it's just the way it goes, you know. Like I'm not selecting, so it's not you know it's not up to me like to, to select the team. And um, I guess that's what I tried to go and into the All Black camp. It was okay, sweet. Sit down. This is what we we want you to work on. Sweet. Get along with these coaches, and that's what I felt like I did over the last four weeks when I was in there. Is just to be like, sweet. I'm just going to try and nail the, the things that they've told me um, because they like, oh, you can play footy, but these other things that you need to. You know your micro uh, micro skills that you need to work on. So those um, ones, nah. <laughs> but I, I, I have heard All Blacks. It is a team of one percent, though, right? Yeah. They, like uh, when I went on, uh, I did this doco where I travelled and just held a camera, basically. But I used to listen in, and it was like it was, it was always like, "There's if you're in this team, we're not here to teach you how to be rugby players. Like you should already know how to do all of this stuff." So it was all the macro stuff. But I, I want, and I don't know how comfortable you are sharing this because I'm I'm not sure. But it seems like this year was a kind of a this was your year. Um, is there anything you reset yourself personally before this year starts? Is there any kind of 
is there anything you said to yourself before? Was there any habits you tried to, oh, or did you listen to like a, did you get a coach? Was there any kind of thing you watched? Because well, this year was particularly pretty telling for you as a rugby player. I think I was just, well, yes and no. Like I, I, I kind of just wanted to build off what I did for Harbour last year and um, Bunnings for NPC. Um, I, I thought I had a good year that year and then, um, I didn't make the All Black 15 um, group or, or the end of year tour, so it was kind of like, okay, sweet. So I guess going into this year, it was a lot of hurt. Um, and I kind of just had the mindset, I was like, man, I'm just going to like go out there and play. Like, yeah, like, fuck it, like, you know. Um, I'm just going to go play my own my own game and um, just play, I guess, without no, you know, no shackles on me and yeah. just with freedom, you know, so... Um, was that a team thing as well? Because I know we've talked about how you know it's, it's been a rough part of it, and I think the reason it's been rough is because we've watched you all year or the last couple of years and gone, this guy's an absolute star. And then the hard part about it is that you don't get to make it. But that Chiefs team that you guys had this year, and I know every Chiefs fan right now want to know like what it was like in the trenches, you guys were just superior across the board as the year went on. But it looked like you guys were playing a free brand of rugby. Yeah, I think... And that hurts to say as a Hurricanes fan. Yeah, I can't stand yes. Chiefs fans. Yeah. <laughs> My Chiefs They're fans may purse yeah, yeah. me off, bro. <laughs> I don't know why. They just annoy me. <laughs> just loyal, eh? Yeah, I oh, think they just... Those cowbells, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Um, nah, I think we're pretty lucky because we've had the same kind of team for like the last three or four years. So, And like I talked about those connections, I guess like a lot of boys have um, come through the last three or four years and never got an opportunity. And heaps of boys um, had come off long-term injuries and, and whatnot. So we actually had a full healthy squad, which was nice because um, in previous years, normally like Chiefs are pretty hard done by with injuries and stuff yeah. like that. So it's like, you know, so it was just good to have a full team. Yeah, touch wood. But, um, yeah, I think we've just all been together for three or four years and it's obviously all clicked. And I guess we haven't been too far away in previous years. You know, we make the semifinals. And um, if you look back at tape, what like, the mistakes that we make is at crucial times – inside their 22 where it's been scoring opportunities and we've just missed the last pass or um you know we didn't we didn't make that pass or um we're down there didn't take points and whatnot so um we didn't feel like it was too far away and then obviously i guess all those um games that you do lose um in the seams and stuff makes your team a lot stronger, stronger yeah. you know what i mean so true um i felt like this year and Lots of us boys have played together in Waikato and or around the region, you know what I mean? Like from a young age as well. So, um, yeah, I guess it's just that camaraderie and those connections we have to feel. And let's be honest, like Hamilton's not a big city, so easy 10 or 15 around. minutes, it's easy to get around and the boys <laughs> are all together, together, you know what I mean? So that's what I think it's pretty. we're pretty lucky to have in Hamilton is that everyone's so close to each other that we always, you know, hang out together and... Yeah, there's not much to do in Hamilton, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it's it's the makes boys, the rugby better. Uh, yeah, coffee cards, heaps of coffee cards. You know, boys are getting over playing PlayStation together, and culture, just chilling. You know, so what's your card game of choice? Ooh, a lot of five hundred at the moment. Oh, old school. Okay. Yeah, five hundred. Look like you play Euchre and everything. Or up the creek. Yeah, heaps of yeah, just heaps of those games. Any scum? Um, but a scum, eh? Yeah, but those are the boys who don't know how to play five hundred. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, I, I do want to ask um, this question because we have been guilty of it. There's been a bit of criticism about um, kind of rugby, the game. It's always going to be a slow year for rugby from a fans' p point of view with the World Cup year. But you know there are talks about the league being a better kind of product and that and that kind of thing. As a player, when you, when you hear this stuff, you're like, bro, just be grateful, bro. We're just getting out there, bro. It's not our fault, you know? I think there are things happening in the game. What what, what do you think about, like, kind of bro. those comments on the game? You can be honest because we are nah, critical we're too. The, we're the worst critics. We're, we're the like, worst oh, You know what I'll do? So fantasy rugby. All these, <laughs> all us players, all us players, literally, every time the Players Association comes in, we need to do this to get more for, um, crowd engagement. We need to do this, 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 and oh, this. Oh, you guys talk about so it. So we talk about it, yeah. And, like, we're, like, because no one wants to run out to an empty stadium, you know what I mean? Like, Facts. especially, like, but it looked like you guys had it good this year, but in oh, previous yeah. years it has been tough. Yeah, but I think that's because um, when they're slowly getting, like, they're looking overseas and, look like, you know, you just have to look overseas, like NFL oh. and... You know, like all these other Let's say his language, like and you know what I mean. Like, oh, so you guys are in those meetings, kind of giving you idea. Nah, so as a Chiefs team, so like they'll come and then obviously there's only a few boys that are like part of the players' association. Um, like the top dogs will, you know, have deliberate and you know talk about all the big problems and stuff. But then obviously they'll come and talk to the team, and then they're just talking about like a few points, and then they're like, "Oh, you guys got any comments for us?" And you push um, back. 
Do we just say that like, you know, all you have to do is look on TikTok yeah. and look at all the stuff over there or mm. like Instagram and see how good like the crowds are and how mean they get it hyped up for the games and stuff like that. And as a fan, like if I'm going to another sport and I'm like, you come to a good atmosphere, you're like, Right, this come is back. unreal, yo. Well, like. Exactly, right? Because so I know so many rugby players love NBA. Yeah, right. They love they love NFL because and obviously they got the big money to to play the narratives. But it just doesn't it doesn't seem like there's and it doesn't help that you guys are having to play the same all the New Zealand teams. We're kind of missing that third country. With do you think that's what it's missing too? Like yes and no. I feel like the brand of footy's still pretty good though. Like it's, it's our, like this year, like it's been pretty entertaining. True. You know what I mean? Like, Your team was, <laughs> <laughs> but like. I feel like yeah, it's um, you know I don't I don't know what it is like yeah I can't I know talk to other fans about like why why don't they come to games and stuff like that and um, but like us boys like why don't we just put a game at four thirty or two thirty in the afternoon like we love playing at four o'clock in the afternoon because yeah still sunny fans can get it's out not too late early. Yeah, you know like it's yeah it's just it's just easy you know and I'll um, tell you what it is Sean. Oh, let me tell you what. It is. <laughs> no, I, I, when you talk about like, I mean, the, there's a viral clip that goes around about the Hokies and they run out to enter Sandman with the um, with Metallica, right? And it's yeah. a full audience and a full crowd, but it's an event. That it's an event. There's only a certain amount of times you'll actually go and get to watch your college football team play, and there's only a certain amount of times you get to get to go out and watch Waikato play in the NPC. Each one is an event, and everyone has to be there to be a part of that event. And I feel like that's what's missing in our sports, rugby culture especially. We have so many games. You guys are stretched thin over every sort of, you know, every weekend you seem to be doing something, and, and everyone gets forgotten about. And being able to just hone in and turn it into an event each time and even stagger them. Have all the games at 4.30. So you, if you want to watch your team, you've got to go along to watch it. Or they have like a red zone channel that shows everyone's games going simultaneously. There's so much like little intricate tiny changes that doesn't have to change too much for you guys as players. But as fans, we get to absorb it. We get to take it on and we get to, you know, we get to enjoy it and we get time to to miss it as well. You miss the NFL. When the NFL's not playing, you miss the NFL. Uh, but I don't think That's we get to hear players. New Zealand rugby <laughs> 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 I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we get to hear players like to kind of say like we are suggesting, we are thinking about that. Because I think there's also like a brand of media that doesn't feel like the players – it's kind of you're gonna get the like, uh, what do you reckon this, this, that, and you're gonna go A plus A B C, but we don't really get that. And it, do you think that players would respond to a different type of media if we could mix it up? Like they are wanting to kind of. Well, you're just you're moving with the times though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I agree, but obviously it's, it's not way pay, pay, way totally, pay, totally, totally, yeah. totally. You know what I mean? But I think as players, like 100, percent you want to be running out to, you know. Crowds that actually out crowds. yell, like even at Bunnings, you know, like it's actually good footy. Like if you're thinking about you know, NRL, like probably like Bunnings is a bit similar in terms of like you're playing at like local um, grounds, grounds yeah, and stuff 100%. like that. And yeah. um, you know, it's it's age, it's like you know, boys coming from club footy from Super Rugby. You might have a few All Blacks coming in and whatnot, but like the footy is actually pretty good because you're throwing the ball around. You know, like it's the balls and play. Good brand to watch. Yeah, the ball the ball and play is actually quite high, and so. Um, how do you brand that kind of footy as, you know, like, like Bro, it's Martin next, Marks? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, next generational yeah. rugby too. Like, we get to see the next stars yeah. coming through an NPC level. Yeah. Like, well, they should be profiled. We should be able to learn who they've come in. Yeah. There needs to be a draft from the high schools into the yeah. NPC. Oh, draft's cool. I just, I did so many things that we could be doing with we, it. Maybe we should work for no. NZR. <laughs> no, we don't know anything <laughs> about I'm rugby. I'm all about that. <laughs> just really quickly, I want to know the jump up in NPC, super, and then what it was like. Talk about going from for going into all black camp. Like, what were you nervous? Like, how did it feel for you? Yeah, very intense. I guess um, a lot more intense than um, Super Rugby. Um, a lot more intense. Or in a way that it's, um, I guess, because you're in Super Rugby like the whole year. You know, you can't actually be like that for the whole whole year. But I guess when or when I felt like I was in AB's camp, I felt like you know it's like well. Like, your first time in there, you don't want to like muck up or anything. And like, even like, I've never had such sweaty hands in meetings before, <laughs> man. Like, turn my phone don't off. Me, I know my, me, I know my, me. yeah, I know my phone's turned off. But like, imagine if your phone goes off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And then yeah, it's like those ones. Like, yeah, I know the answer. Do I know the answer? <laughs> <laughs> don't oh, ask no. me. Don't ask me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look away. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, it was, it was, um, oh, like. I think because it's the best of the best in, in, in the country. so In the world too. Yeah, in the world. You know, like it's um, – you just got to be on the whole time. Were the um, snacks better? Snacks are unreal. you got a nutritionist there and 
Um, Do you get like your own food whenever? Yeah, well, we had this. We had the um, the chef from Kingy Wallace, who's like the head chef for the All Blacks now. Well, just for the World Cup. Anyway. Do you put in your order? Nah, well, he'll just like make you some well, food. Well, he'll oh. he'll be like circling around and making sure that everything's all good and whatnot. And um, nah, to be honest, we're pretty lucky that That's we get unreal can, food. Can, what about the groups? Like, and everyone in the groups does like the rookies all go off to one side, or is it like pretty inclusive? Everyone just sits with everyone, or do you sit with your super teammates? How does it all work? No, everyone sits together, you know, like it's pretty good in a way that um, I guess you're rooming with people that you don't actually know as well, so. Um, Who would you room with? First week, I rich, uh, Richie Moe. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, he he's was, the man. Yeah, he's the man. Braden Enor. Um, who else did I room with? Another Auckland boy. Shannon Frizzell. You and him. Um, yeah, a few boys. Like, so, boys that I've never um, really got to hang out with, so. Obviously, rubbing with the week it was pretty cool. So, get to them on what was your what was your track on the bus that you played on in your headphones or walking off the bus? Like, do you set a playlist? Like, because um, that, that's 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 main character vibes, eh? Like <laughs> when you're like on an all black bus or going to the game or got your headphones and you, yeah, what track you, you playing? Fuck you mean? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a song, that. by the way, <laughs> guys. It's a song. He's not saying. Uh, um, yeah, kind of like the trophies. No. Yeah, trophies. <laughs> um, yeah, like. The hype. rap that are like, you know, it gets, it's got a bit of a the beat in it, you know what little I mean? Little baby in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, just have a bit of a groove as well when you get on the field, you know, just feeling it on the field. And I guess you're kind of visualising, you know, things that might happen in the game. And um, yeah, it's kind of just. Yeah, 100%. But I want to ask the question, and you don't have to answer it as well, but obviously you're off contract at the end of the year. <laughs> uh, exclusive uh, vibes. Exclusive. I'll ask you this. Do you know what you're doing next year? <laughs> no, nah, I'm not sure what I'm doing next year. Still don't know. Still don't know. I kind of just was waiting to um, see if I actually debuted or not. Yeah. Obviously got there in the end, but yeah, I've just been, I've literally just been putting everything off because I was like, oh, I'll just want to see what, what happens, what happens, what happens. So. Well, you've got a bit of time now if you want to just, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, 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 what options, what, what are your options out of curiosity? What, what type of things are you looking at? Like what's in front of you? Without getting yourself in trouble. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a few things like, um, Going overseas, um, staying here in New Zealand for a couple more years. Is um, NRL an option? Um, potentially. What was an option? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll ask questions. Are the rumours at all true Like you, that you spoke to Wayne Bennett at all? Yeah, that was true. It was true? Yeah. How, so How did that was, leak? Uh, Were you surprised that leaked? Yeah, I don't know how it leaked, to be honest. To this day, you don't know? Nah, I still don't know. Wow. Oh, so it wasn't know. you? <laughs> no, it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> Those ones. Those all. I was just Those trying ones. to go over there for a, you know. What is the Bennett Cordo. like? He's he's the man, the Oracle, yeah. genuine man. Like he's, um, yeah, he's so cool. Did he just bring you direct? Did he just bring you direct? He's like, nah, yeah, I actually went over there game. for a weekend. Oh right, face to face. Yeah, yeah so I where don't know, they, where I don't know Dolphins had so much money. Well, I think because they've been the first club to have like pokey machines and stuff like that since like 1995. Oh, those ones. <laughs> so they're on the pokey money. Oh, oh, they're on. oh that's good money. They on struggle street money. <laughs> so I think that's, that's how they've got. Like I think they're the only. They club. own like all the land where the malls and stuff yeah, are too yeah. in the club. Too. It was like oh, crazy, man. Like, I went over there and um, pokey. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, they've, got, they've got um, like their own supermarket, like Dolphin Supermarket. Right oh, next, right next door to their. Oh well, they um, gave me that. Well they gave me that to him. I was just like, "Holy!" <laughs> so, Sean, uh, veggie and produce for the week. <laughs> uh, just swipe your card; it'll be fine. Um, Has Japan come? Out of curiosity, I, I think this yeah, like, Blacks. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like because I've, I've, Look I've at left us. it too late, so um, most of them all um, taken up because obviously England and Wales and stuff have just gone pretty tits up after COVID and stuff like that. So heaps of the boys are. Um, going over there, there's only a certain amount of players, international players, players you're allowed on the field. So, um, but yeah, I'm just hurricanes. Seeing how we go. Hurricanes, hurricanes have a listen. Hurricanes, hurricanes, hurricanes come on, definitely man. Not, definitely. Not. Uh, Sean, where does your heart think you are next year? Um, I mean, I guess after getting a bit of a look for ABs, you know, might might hang around, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I like that. Ooh. Look at this guy. Yeah. Sorry, just revisiting. How close were you going to um, <laughs> Dolphins? Like, how close was it? Um, but it's last year. This year's played out. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> was, we can only was, speak to last how you felt last year. Oh, at the time, I was yeah pretty close. Where would you play? At that point, they hadn't signed the hammer, so fullback, be at the back. Yeah. Oof. I like that. Oh, I like that. Warriors That's the energy. Yeah, the Warriors. Warriors. Yeah, the Warriors. After the Warriors. 
Yeah, yeah. Before we before we let you go, I do I do want to um just ask if you could build uh the perfect rugby player, you know, based on left step, right step, speed, bump off, fend, based off different players, building a rugby player, who, who would it be? So like, is a we go speed, or like, like we go speed, we can go step. Um, probably speed would have to be. Maybe like Brian Habano. Or I was thinking the same thing. See, he's just yep, a he proper knows. rugby player right now. Or um, who's the um, English swinger? Jo- uh, oh, Robinson. Back in the day. Robinson? The little fella, yeah. yeah. Robinson. Uh, he, he you know fast. Rugby 08? Yeah, he he looks like fast. a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rugby 08, I like that. So yeah. Speed Habana. Speed Habana. Step. Step. I'm, I'm taking um, Itani Nanai Satoru. Nice, eh? Yeah. yeah, he's so nicey, man. Like, you no one wants to, like, I'm just like, bro, lucky you're on my team because... There you go, pass you the ball and have a crack. Vision? Vision, oh, I'll probably have to go DC, yeah, I reckon. Oh. <coughs> Flair, like instinct for the game? Flair. Mm. You know how players, like great players like Greg Inglis can see it before it happens? Mm. Bodie's probably one who's pretty similar as well. Bodie, <laughs> bro, sure, sure. Yeah, your <laughs> Hurricanes players. Um, Don't listen to him. Carlos Spencer. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And body type. Blues. Now you just have to put a body to yeah, it. Just Whose a body, body to are you putting there? You can put say yours. You can put say yours. Not mine. Not mine. Oh, that's tough. Because you want a bit of height, but you don't want to get too tall. That's it. You really thought about this. You know, you want to be like a little bit of sense of gravity. You know what I mean? Like I love that you're. Not, I love that you're overthinking this. It's no, great. It's you're good. right on. It's true. good because this is going to be on social. Maybe like a Jose Aguirre or something like that. Oh, oh yeah. come on. Skucks. Sleeper skucks. You know what yes. I mean? Last one, haircut. 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 Um, yeah. Ori Brooks. Oh, oh come <laughs> on. Yeah. Shut the front door. Joe Stevenson, right, thank you for your time, <laughs> my man. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you, bro. Uh, You're the man and all the best. Appreciate it, boys. We'll see thank you, you here next year. <laughs> 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 Hurricanes call. Cool.